So, as you guys can probably tell by the cool ass freaking katana that I have right here, the Koma Sword, we're talking about Blue Exorcist. Ah, uh, man, I love this replica. I got it at a Comic Con and it's freaking awesome. So, um, Blue Exorcist. Um, I saw the first season. Um, I love the first season. But today isn't about the first season. We're talking about Blue Exorcist Season 2. The Kyoto Saga. So this is going to be a little different from every other first impressions that I've ever done. Um, for a number of reasons. First of all, I've already seen uh, all of Season 1. Um, I've, I love Season 1. That's why I have this freaking cool-ass replica of the Koma Sword. Um, and uh, another reason is I watched almost every episode of Season 2. Uh, the only episode I didn't watch is the only one that doesn't have a dub on Funimation right now. Um, which I find really weird, considering I think this was dubbed back in 2017, but whatever. So, the Kyoto Saga. This is a saga that takes place right after, I think, episode 14 of the original season. And, uh, from what I can tell, it goes off of the manga continuation of the series. So, pretty much everything from episode 15 onwards of season 1 is discounted. And I will get into my thoughts on that in just a little bit. But, uh, first let's talk about the story of the Kyoto Saga. Because, um, there's a bit to unpack here. So basically, the, the gist of this is Ren has been outed as a demon by, uh, it, by what happened in episode 14. He was fighting against, um, uh, a Maimon, King of Earth. I had to remember his name for a second. It's been a while since I watched Blue Exorcist, to be honest been a while since I saw season one. Um, uh, he fought against the Maimon, uh, lost control, uh, cracked his sword, and got his sword back, and, um, uh, and then he was, like, sentenced, like, you know, you are going to have to pass our exam in six months, or you die. Uh, so this uh, season kicks up right right there with him trying to burn the uh, he has three candles he's trying to burn the one to light them on the left on the left and right at the same time without uh, burning them without lighting them on fire or burning the one in the left or in the middle I don't know why I keep saying left but um while this is happening, they go to Kyoto and go to uh, Bon's, Bon Sh uh, Shik no, Shima's and Konakomaru's. Um, <coughs> they go to their temple and some shit is going down. You know, um, apparently somebody is trying to steal two demon artifacts. Uh, the the left and right eye of the impure king. Uh, which, uh, spoiler alert, if you can't figure it out yourself, um, they both get kidnapped and the impure king is resurrected. Um, while this is happening, Rin can't draw his sword for a really fucking retarded reason. Um, at the very least, the reason that they give for the for the same basic thing happening in season one made more sense. <laughs> but, um, in this season, it just kind of, the, the basic reason is Rin is having emotional issues and he isn't able to draw his sword, which, come the fuck on. Ugh, 
we go pretty much the entire season without him drawing his sword because of it, except for in episode nine. We go nine, we go <coughs> almost nine full episodes without him drawing his sword. And it is so fucking irritating because you know that he's going to draw his sword and it's going to be at the climax. It's going to be a thing. And then, like, episode 10 of the show has, like, this thing of, like, oh, you're going to, like, like, burn, you're, like, you're kind of have an ultimatum where you have to, like, burn everything on, like, a big frickin' mountain. And, like, it's going to kill everyone, except not really, because you know Rin's just going to control his flames, and it's not going to harm anybody. So, ugh. God, that was so fucking irritating. Um... You know, it, there's uh, there's another thing going on too with uh, some random douchebag getting the power of a of a phoenix demon and having pretty much the same abilities as Rain, except his flames are a normal fire color, um, and his regeneration is pretty much on the same par with Majin Buu. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, Bond gains the power of a nut of the same Phoenix Demon, but his is, like, really tiny, because most of his Phoenix Demon gets stolen, pretty much. And, from what I can gather, he doesn't seem to have the same abilities, which makes me wonder why he has it in the first place, but whatever. And I'm sounding like I am some random person, I... I'm drawing a blank. And that's pretty much how the season ends. Rin blows up the Demon King. Or not Demon King. He blows up the Impure King by by using his flames at the coolest moment ever. And there's a moment where he is being consumed by his flames and he starts to go insane. And he gains control because the power of friendship. So, right off the bat, let me talk about the positives before I get into the negatives of this season, because, um, uh, I got a few bits to say, negative-wise. Um, positive-wise, this season looks really good. It looks just like the original season, but much more, uh, updated. Shiemi, it's most obvious with Shiemi how her design is much more bubbly and cute than it was before. I mean, her design was still pretty good before, but now it's like... she She's just cuter now. She Like, she's a lot more... Um, her hair's a lot shinier. It's a lot... It looks a lot more silky. Um, which is weird, because almost every other character is just... They look pretty much the same. So I don't know why her design has such a massive update. Especially considering she doesn't do anything in this whole fucking season again. But, um... You know. There's that. Um... Uh, uh, the soundtrack... They have the same soundtrack as before, which is awesome. Which is great, because Blue Exorcist's uh, soundtrack is fucking great. Except for the opening and ending themes. Those are new. Um, which I'm fine with because the opening theme is done by the same person who, uh, same group who did the, I want to say they did the first season opening, the first opening for the second, for the first season. Um, maybe I'm wrong on that, but it sounds like the same people. Um, that opening is pretty freaking good, by the way. Uh, I don't think it quite... I, I, I think it's probably the weakest opening we have for Blue Exorcist, but that really isn't saying much because all three openings are awesome. Um, In My World is a freaking jam. Um, My favorite is Core Pride. Um, and this one is pretty freaking good, too. But uh, I would say that's probably my least favorite out of the three. Um... Like I said, though, not to knock the song at all. It's still it's still a jam. Um, I don't care for the ending theme all that much, but maybe that's because I didn't actually listen to it all that much. I listened to 
like half of it before skipping to the next episode. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to find a, ni a nice stopping point, but they just kept ending it on cliffhangers, and I hate it when anime does that because it makes it so hard to just stop. Um, anyway, uh, the uh, another positive is that almost all the characters feel the same way that they did before, which is amazing because this season, uh, this season. Uh, was made six years after the first season ended. Um, and I'm kind of glad that it, uh, I'm kind of glad that it got made because it maybe, maybe we'll get more Blue Exorcist in the future, I'm hoping. Um, and it seems to be, it seemed to kind of, I don't know if this is the way it is in the manga or not. I should really read the manga, but. Um, it continued one of the plot points. It didn't actually continue one of the plot points, but it alluded to one of the plot points that I loved about season one. Um, that I will get into when I get into the negative section. Um, the only character that I think they kind of, like, is kind of so-so with is uh, Shura. Um, before, she was just kind of this, uh, shit starter character. She was, um, she was a character that just kind of started shit, basically. And she, she was kind of this, uh, jackass girl mentor character with, with, um, with 10k jugs on her chest, I guess. I, I don't know what to say. Um, like, that's kind of a big point with her character, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, uh, or is it wink, wink, nudge, nudge, whatever. Um, anyway, it, it's, uh, that's kind of a big point with her character, and here, she is usually the same character, but there's a, a lot of moments of her acting all bubbly and cute, and it's, it's out of nowhere, because I don't remember her character ever being like that. You know, there's a lot of moments where it's like, Oh, hey, handsome, how are you doing? Sure, I'll come and do some paperwork for you. <laughs> like, there's a lot of mo there's a few moments like that, and it just comes out of nowhere, because she never acted like that before. So, mm. uh, the animation looks great. Um, like I said, the music is still really good. I love the OST for this show. Um, the, uh, there's not a lot of CGI in here that I noticed. Um, the animation is very fluid. I love it. And the color choices are very, very good. And I like the, I like some of the designs for some of the new characters. Alright, let's get into the negative section. <laughs> um, negative, first negative, I need to get out of the way right off the bat. I hate that this season treats half of season one as though it didn't happen. I know why it happened this way, because half of season one goes in its own direction. It did not go from what happened in the manga. And the way that season one ended, I'm not entirely sure what you could do for a second season. Because they defeated Satan. Satan doesn't seem like he would be a problem anymore. Um, and if you were to continue it, I think it would be kind of an episodic thing. But you could probably do something with, Ru uh, with Yukio being, um, with Yukio having demon powers now. Because at the end of season one, Yukio awakens as a demon. He, uh, somewhere in season one, Satan possesses his body and his demon powers are awakened. And I kind of like that because um, he his demon powers were already awakening, but um, he didn't have any real powers. It, it's just that his body was changing. Um, he was going through, like, a second puberty, basically. Um, or wait, no, he's 15, so he would still be going through puberty. Anyway, um, he's, anyway, the point I'm trying to get at is that Yukio was changing into a demon, 
and uh, as Satan going into his body kind of jump started his powers. And um, the ending with Yukio and Rin like grabbing each other's arms and um, turning into a blue phoenix was fucking awesome. Um, that was fucking awesome. And how they defeated Satan was just great. Um, but this season treats almost everything that happened as though it didn't happen. And that really bugs the shit out of me. Because if you're just going to go off of what the manga did, why don't you pull a Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood and just restart your continuity? Because, like, just, like, imagine somebody who doesn't know that there's a manga, that doesn't know the background of why Season 2 is the way that it is. They're going to be confused as fuck, because they're going to think that Season 2, oh, it's Season 2, it, like, continues off of where Season 1 ended off. And no, it kind of treats it as though it doesn't happen, and... I could conceivably, if there was like a, if there was like a freaking, if there was a time skip in between episode 14 or 15 and the next episode, I could conceivably say, well, season two just happens to take place in that time skip, but it doesn't. It doesn't. Like, within the first season, Rin gains his powers back. He gains control over his powers by uh, taking on um, one of the priest's wife who is brought back with a demon ability where she has, like, spider stuff. And she uses her uh, web powers to uh, basically seal the coma sword shut. So um, the sword is stuck shut and can only be um, melted by Rin's flames, but Rin uh, can't control his flames. So when he finally does gain control over them, he, um, you know, he proves it and then he draws his sword. And that whole thing, I think, only lasts like one episode. So it's like, he only goes almost one whole episode without drawing his sword because it's sealed away. And the reason why he couldn't open it made sense. But in this show, he spends almost the entire fucking season not being able to draw the damn thing. And it's because, oh, I emotional problems. Like, I'm, I'm not believing in myself. Like, I, I'm conflicted. Okay. What about being conflicted prevents you from... From drawing the fucking sword. You know? It, it's never stated that, like, oh, there's, like, a seal on the sword or whatever, so you can't draw it if you're not all there. there. The only thing that is sealed in this blade is his demonic power. So, what exactly is going on here? And it, it's just... <clears throat> It just, it just pisses me off so much because it's just like, it doesn't make any sense. Um, I mean, this is a plot point that only exists for a few episodes, but it's still irritating as fuck because it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. You know, like for most of the season, he doesn't even have the sword because Shura has it in her weird little breast pocket dimension thing. Um... I should clarify, she's not actually holding it. She has, like, this little uh, magic... She Shura is a character that has, like, seals on her body. Um, like, magic symbols. And these symbols have, like, a pocket dimension in them or something. She's able to pull just things out. And, um... Yeah. So, <laughs> she, she, like, keeps her sword in... He, she keeps his sword in his chest, which... Or, in her chest... Which is weird because in the first season, it was shown that it was in her stomach one, not in her chest one, but whatever. Um, another negative that I have is this season really likes to use footage from the first season to kind of make, to kind of 
remind you of shit. And I get it. This this season came out in 2017. The original um, season, or 20, was it 2016? Whatever. Uh, the first season came out in like 2012. I get it, but, man, 2012, really? Oh, yeah, it happened when I was still in high school. Damn. That's been a long fucking time. Um, anyway, uh, this is kind of a thing. It's like, they, they spend a lot of the season, a, a lot of moments where they just reuse uh, footage and, and dialogue and whatever from the first season. And it kind of makes it feel like the season isn't able to stand up on its own. And it's, it's just like, because mm. it spends a lot of its time playing remember this to the previous season and it just kind of yeah I don't know how I feel about that um another negative I have is that the stuff that this season has in common with the with the part of the season that it's trying to rewrite kind of pisses me off a little bit because the the in at least in my head the first season did it better you know like there's this um there's this moment in season two where um izumo shows up and she's like she's the only character to actually give rin the time of day because he's the son of satan which is really weird because nobody ever freaking talks like that to yukio even though they're they're fucking twin brothers. Like, yeah, Rin uh, inherited the power, but they're both sons of Satan. It doesn't matter if Rin was the only one that obtained the power or not. They're both sons of Satan. <laughs> you know? And, like, in the first season, it was like Rin was just kind of doing his own thing, and Izumo comes in to help him with his training and realizes it and tells her, uh, or she tells him, Something along the lines of, you need to think, uh, you need to be confident and your flames should obey your will. Because, um, like, if you are having doubts or if you're not in the moment, if you're not, if you're not, you know, like, emotionally strong, if you are not mentally strong enough, these, um, your flames will not obey you. You know, it's, it's like how she uses her demon familiars. Um, and she goes on, the, like, this little tirade of, like, um, you know, demons and humans work together all the time. Like, just look at my freaking familiars. Um, so, like, that's why I'm not afraid of you. But in this season, I don't know, it's a bit more in character, I guess, because she's kind of being a smug bitch about it, but... The, the she doesn't help him with his training she does a thing where um she's like like oh my god you're the son of satan who the hell get who who gives a crap like you're like there are tons of people who are half demon half human who who because it's treated like these two are the only freaking sons of satan that these two are the only half breed demons in the whole show. And, like, yeah, there's Mephisto, but he is a pure demon that just happened to switch sides because it's more entertaining for him, I guess. But, like, we've never seen another demon-human hybrid aside from Rin and Yukio. So, what exactly is she talking about? Um... It is kind of nice having each of each of the other friends just kind of come to terms with it themselves, because, like, Shiemi didn't really seem to be bothered all that much, and the others just kind of, like, they all kind of came to Rin all at once after, um, after he proved he had control over his flames, but, um... That lasted maybe three, four episodes in the original season, I think. And, you know, it's a little nice to see it, but I don't know. It just kind of feels... 
it feels like the first season did everything this one does and better. Um, you know, like, it had a way better climax to me. It Like, the story was better. The... I didn't think that the mystery was all that good. Um, I don't know. I mean, this is this was a pretty good season. It was enjoyable, but I don't know what to say here. You know, it's it's kind of weird. Um, if we do get a if we do get a third season, I will definitely watch it. But um, I don't know. So, um, next time on First Impressions, I'm going to be watching a show that has a lot of, a lot of people loving it, a lot of people liking it, and a lot of hype around it. I'm going to be looking at Madoka Magica. I know a little bit about the show from Reputation, but I've never watched it myself. Here's hoping that I enjoy it. So, this has been Super Nintendo, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye bye